Sebastian from Robert Peter Lowe, not good morning everyone i was already inspired listening to the singing it's music to my ear i'm inspired already that but the words uh, you sang we sang here holy devoted to thee So let's um, turn for the start here to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, first seven verses. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, unto Timothy, my own son, in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. That's what I wish everyone, the grace and mercy and peace. It's really something to be in peace with my Savior. And in faith, it says here to uh, those in the faith. Verse 3, as I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou discharge they teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. Rather do something that is faithful and in faith. Do something in faith. Now the end of the commandments is charity out of a pure heart and of good conscience and of faith unfeigned from which some having swerved and have turned aside into vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they are firm. So I thought on this part here that faith unfeigned. Sometimes like, like it says here, desiring to be teachers also and don't know what is this way or that way and, and think we, we know something and really we're, we don't. But do, doing something with a pure, a good conscience and faith unfeigned, that's what will help us through. So I have different the references what I want to go over. Um, now verse Luke 18 verse 8. Like the, the question here, what Jesus is asking. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? That's what is my thought turns through this this morning. My main main thought of will Jesus find faith when he returns? I just lately had similar the, the similar message at home in in Northfield. And Really to think on now the days people are telling this way or that way. This is right. That is right. No, do that rather this way. This is what we should be doing. Do we think out ourselves what we should be doing or do we listen to, to the scriptures? Do we have faith in the Lord? Um, on the bulletin I saw that the, you had the verse there that is um, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. We need to do that too, not just thinking about our own own thoughts. And Luke chapter 8, verse 22 to 25. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples. And he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. 
This is Jesus. He, he fell asleep there. Probably was tired, tired from teaching the people. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being a, afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and water that they obey him. Where is your faith? That's Jesus asking. We hear so many times, we hear sometimes we hear from war or rumors of war or unrest, unsettled imaginations. Where, where is war? Where is unrest? Isn't that right here? That's where there, there's war, right? Unrest. Where is your faith? Second Corinthians 10. Verse 4 and 5. The thought, do we have faith? And what are we doing? For the, verse 4, it says here, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Um, can we do that? Are we doing that? Casting down imaginations? There's so many times, so many imaginations. One person says this way, another person says that. And even uh, the government or our people around us, what are... And then my Im imaginations are start turning. In imaginations, they're wild. They're wild. Can I, through faith, like it says here, bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ? And if our faith is strong, we can do that. Praise the Lord. We, there is a way. Matthew 23, verse 23. <clears throat> Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrite, hypocrites, for ye paid size and mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weighty matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. <clears throat> judgment and mercy and, and faith. Do we have mercy? Are we merciless or are we merciful? Through faith, showing mercy. John 4, chapter 4, verse 39 to verse 42. This is where Jesus was talking to the Samaritan woman. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him. For the saying of the woman, which testified, he told me all that ever I did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them. And he abode there two days, and many more believed because of his own word. And said unto the woman, Now we believe not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. 
um, <clears throat> it means a lot to me, and I, I think for everyone who ever, who, if we understand, um, now we believe not because of the parents, our parents said this, or the minister said this or that. We ourselves have heard through the Spirit that God is leading, and we know, we can we feel He redeemed us. We have a, a way better stand if we believe ourselves, and if we have heard, we real, realized ourselves, convinced through the Spirit, then we have a good stand if we stand in faith like that. We have heard it ourselves. It's not just because you said, like you, <clears throat> if there's something, if we did something wrong, and how can we have peace? Well, we're at on, we're, we have unrest in our heart, and we're, we're not at peace. And, and if we do like the prodigal son, I want to go and confess. Already right there, through my heart, can flow peace. And I feel it. I just, I, it's, there's a, myself, there's something inside me. Something is different. I feel so at rest. Because it's the, through Jesus. Not, it's not because of somebody else told me. And that's a good feeling to have. <clears throat> so it's uh, done through the Spirit and in truth. That's how we should also pray, through the Spirit and in truth. And Paul, he was, um, what I, he was so in faith, he was ready to die and live with the Lord. Or if Jesus wanted him to be longer on the earth, he would still keep on. Whatever was his will, just totally in faith. And then Matthew chapter 14. Verse 26 to 32. This is where they were traveling on, on the water. And Jesus came there. Verse 26, it says, And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Full in faith. If Jesus is walking on the water, you can tell me to come. I will be walking on, on the water too. And he did it. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. What was the difference? He was sinking, what, just looking the direction to Jesus. He could walk on the water, and when he looked the other direction, looked away, the other direction from Jesus, right away he starts sinking. How about us? Do we, which way are we looking? Can we walk on water where we would be sinking if we look away? And here, verse, uh, again, 30, verse 30. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? <clears throat> and when they came, were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Um, so how is it... Um, do I have faith? It's um, our faith weakens 
when we look just to storms, the troubles of life. We're not really made for that. We're not strong enough to just look for, look to the, the troubles of, of life and the storms. We should have faith, trust in the Lord and look to Jesus. Have our mind, our attention turned to the Lord. I had a, my brother once, what I, I was told, my older brother, as he was smaller, he saw once um, there was a bus parked in the, beside the road in the ditch, was almost at the point of tipping over. And as a little boy, um, he had went and looked around the vehicle and he started crying. It looked so awful. A big bus almost turning over. Next minute, it will just tumble over. And then you better don't look to that, that uh, the, the bus there. It looks too ugly. And then he was okay. Then soon he went and looked the ground again, started crying again. So that's how we are doing. We're just sinking. If we look into the trouble and don't have enough faith, we will be sinking. We'll be crying again. We'll be in trouble. <clears throat> James chapter 1, verse 6. <clears throat> but let him ask in faith. Talks about uh, faith. Well, we should be asking the Lord. Nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven and driven with the wind and tossed. That's if our faith is wavering. We'll be driven, driven by the wind. Not be able to stand. Uh, where it says in the, uh, from Joseph in Bible times, that uh, Joseph, he was sold. He had no, his parents weren't there. His brothers, his friends, his relatives, no one there, and he was tempted to sin. Or the, the lady in the house where he was living, she wanted him to sin. And what did he do? Did he, did he waver his faith, faith in God? The first thing what he thought, what would God think about this? One of the first, first things he thought, what would God do about this? So he had fully faith in in the Lord, he trusted in God, even though there was nobody else to show him, tell him what to do. And that is, that is faith. If there's no one else to tell what to do, and we still keep on trustworthy serving the Lord. Hebrews 11. Verse 6 to 10. <clears throat> but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him so we must believe that there will be a reward that diligently seek him we need faith to please him verse 7 by faith Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith, he so sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in the tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, and the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Verse 7, uh, Noah, 
the saving of his house, of his house. Um, what are we doing as parents or as aunts or uncles or just simply our neighbor or for the youth? It's for whom are we living? Is it the saving of our house? Is it the saving of our church? The Lord's church? Do we do anything of this to save something out of faith? As Abraham, he went into a place he didn't know. God called him. God said he should go. So he went. He trusted in God. He looked for a city whose God was the God was the builder, the foundation, the maker of it. <clears throat> and to think of Abraham um, just to um, and then I'm thinking of Genesis 22 from 2 to 10 where it talks about where he should uh, offer up his own son and uh, he went and did he thought that God could awake him from the dead if God tells me to do it I will do it it, it was very hard for him I would I can imagine it would be very hard. I think it was, but he thought God was able to, and he would do. He trusted. He had faith in God. And also Isaac, as um, sometimes I think that is kind of faith. If um, children, they have a question I'll, and ask, like Isaac asked his dad here, where is the lamb that God would, uh, where's the lamb? We we're going to do an offering. But, uh, and then Abraham said that God would look after that. He would provide a lamb. He could have said, I don't believe it. I can't believe it. I don't see anything. Why did Isaac not ask that? I don't, I mean, it's, it's a thought to me. Why didn't he ask? Was it also already, he, he was taught faith. He learned faith. He knew his dad was doing something that was, if the Lord commanded him to do, he would do it by faith. And he also had faith. If dad tells it, God will provide. Sure, I'm okay. Children that are asking and demanding, tell me, you have to. If you can't tell me, is there faith? So somehow, if children are satisfied with the answer they're getting, to me, it seems like they're living also in faith. If their dad is their parents live in faith, then they believe that too. Hebrews 11, verse 17 to 19. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he had, and, and he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to rise, to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. So that's what he thought. God was able to. If God says this to me, God will be able to do this. Acts chapter 16. Verse 25 to 34. This is where Paul and Silas were in prison. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. 
And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do they, help, do they self no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So now, what is being said to us also? Or what? Just I'm, I'm thinking that could be said to us here too. Like it says here, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. It's not just himself, his whole house too. It's a great responsibility. What we're doing ourselves, that our whole household can be saved, that, that can depend on what we are doing. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in the house, in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and his and all his straightway. And when he had brought them out into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. So believing, faith makes joy. That's believing and living in joy. Like this... Uh, jailer he has he was now believing had faith and that he was joyous then and his whole house it was just not just him alone <clears throat> hebrews 11 verse 24 to 31 By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming the approach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. So, he would rather suffer affliction than to enjoy the pleasure of sin. Pleasure, pleasure of sin, what does it sound anyway? It's not a pleasure. Sin is ugly. And there's so much unrest and war in our heart, unsettled such a sin. So it's, it's not pleasure of sin, really not. It's just for a season. Afterward, it is, it's a pain. <clears throat> Verse 27, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured, as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians, as saying to, to do, were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. Many things happened through faith. And also, nowadays, many things happen through faith. And to endure 
to suffer affliction rather. That is, that's, that is faith. That we have to, we need faith to endure that, to go through with that, and then trust in the Lord. James chapter 2, verse 14 to 21. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? Will it help them just to tell them, God will take care of you, and you don't give them anything? Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? <clears throat> so, here verse 22, faith with works, then faith is made perfect. Faith without works is not complete. Um, <clears throat> faith without works is like, um, I'm thinking of a, in Belize, I once uh, shot um, a toucan, a really pretty nice toucan, looked really nice. After, with a, just with a slingshot, and it, it, it uh, plums in a plum tree, and I thought it was, and I was, I enjoyed shooting birds. But after I shot this bird, it looked so pretty. I felt sorry for I did, what I did. But isn't it like um, if a boy or a, comes in and tells, Mom, Mom, I have a nice birdie here, nice bird. And then Mom sees it. Yeah, it had his limbly hanging down, bloody. Looks ugly. Dead. Is it a pretty bird? It was. It's going to be rotten pretty soon. That's how faith is. It looks sort of nice without works. Faith. So there is, there has to be, something is, will follow. If you have faith, something will follow. And if nothing follows, that's like a dead bird that still looks pretty. Here, verse 23 and farther. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. See ye then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. If I, if I say, I'm, a, I, I'm not afraid to go in the dark, in the woods, well, for what am I afraid anyway? Will there be a snake? Will there be a wolf? A coyote? A skunk? Will there be a bear? And I say, I'm not afraid. I can go. I will, I will walk into the woods. Nothing. And then I kind of hesitate and not 
going? Why are not? Why are you standing there? That would sort of feel like. Well, he's. He's a coward. After all, he's. He doesn't believe what he said. So faith will do, according to what he says. Romans eight. Verse 14. I like Romans 8 verse 14. This verse here, it says that for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Through faith being led, like if I have done something wrong, And um, no one told you to do this. I myself, by faith, think I should go and apologize. I owe the other one an apology. I am going. Nobody told me I should. I am. And isn't that a child of God that is led by the Spirit through faith? And if somebody tells you, you have to go and apologize. Well, yeah, sure. If you say I have to, I will. But I don't feel like it. But if you say that makes peace, I will do it. That's, that does not, not necessarily say that it's a child of God. But if nobody told you to go and apologize, and you do, that's a sign you have faith. That's a sign you are a child of God. It comes to my my memory. Um, I once uh, there was a brother. I thought he had said something to me. I would I would call it sort of he sinned against me. Sounds maybe funny, but and then I went. You know, I had to do, had to do with school, and I went to the school board right after. And I thought after school, I was a teacher, school teacher, and I thought I would tell the school board about my this other brother and talk things over with him and then he wasn't at home now what and then I remembered started thinking what am I doing anyway I haven't really prayed about it I have not, not prayed about it and then I asked the Lord and prayed for this brother you know what you know what a few days later I think it was two days later he came and, and apologized and I was curious I had the question, did somebody tell you to apologize? No. That really touched my heart. So simple. I could ask the Lord, and the Lord told him to go, and he went by faith. So, isn't that a child of God? Okay, Romans 8, verse 37 to 39. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. More than conquerors. Verse 20, uh, 38. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So more than conquerors, just think of that. How can you, how can I, how can you, how can we be more than conquerors? Stop sinning. Yeah, and I'm at peace. I can go home. I conquer, right? Sin is gone. But to be more than a conqueror, that, and then I'm thinking of, if it's more than a conqueror, it will rub off on someone else too. They will be blessed by what I am, I am doing. They will realize there's something is, and I, I will be wishing someone else too. 
those blessings. And in faith, I'll step forth and work and do my share that other ones can be saved as well. That's more than a conqueror. To look, to look for others, not just me. That's more than a conqueror. One way to describe it. And then for the closing, another two verses out of Proverbs chapter 3. This um, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Familiar verses, but they're not so familiar if we're not trusting. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Stepping forth in faith. One thing that I was going to mention, I missed it, but uh, I was um, some years ago, there was a lady where I was, we were renting land from her and we started visiting and talking. And she asked me the question, do you think your church will stand like if time goes on another 200 years, will it still be there? Do they really believe it? Sometimes. There's some people are drifting away. And, well, will they really? What should he answer her? Will their church still be standing in 200 years if time goes on? Will your church, will our church, will the church of God, I mean the church what is working for Christ, will those churches be there another 200 years, what are now there? I said to her, Yes, I believe there will be. I don't know who will. Like, if the more faith I have, the more I can say I believe, yes, it will happen. And whoever has not faith, they'll say, ah, probably not. I doubt, I doubt it. Don't get doubtful, I would say. <clears throat> press, press. Keep on pressing toward the high mark. <clears throat> so we will, we want to... Go to closing and trust, trust the Lord. I would ask you to, uh, for a kneeling for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you for the love, for your mercy and forgiveness. And Lord, I pray you that we that you may strengthen us, that we may be fully devoted and serving you in faith and humbleness. Lord, that we may be holy, unblameable, ready for your return. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.